Hey everybody, I'm Angela Sharp and welcome to The Daily Mix. You know what The Daily Mix is about. I'm gonna tell you everything that's going on in and around St. Louis, basically keeping you in the mix. Now, I know everybody has been invited to a wedding before and maybe they didn't go or maybe they didn't wanna go. Maybe they said they were gonna go, but then they didn't go because something else came up or they simply forgot. Well, this kind of happened and the couple was billed for it. The Minnesota couple had missed a wedding. It was a family member's wedding, a distant family member, and they needed a babysitter. Their mother was gonna do the babysitting and she canceled the day of. She got sick and, and couldn't babysit. Now the wedding said no kids, so the couple stayed home. Now they did make a phone call to the bride and groom. They justified themselves by saying that on their wedding day, they didn't wanna receive phone calls from people saying, oh hey, we're not coming, our dog's sick or whatever. Later, they received a bill for $75 for the bride and groom for their meal. And they did what everybody's doing this day and age. They took a photo of it and posted it on every social media site available. Now, people on the social media sites are really angry. They're angry at the couple, the bride and groom, for charging them for missing. I'm not, I'm not angry at all. If you say you're gonna go somewhere, you should go somewhere. This is why you'll notice if you've ever invited me to a wedding, I always check no. No, I'm not coming. I don't like weddings. And if you want to rate these people, there might be an app for that. It's called the People app. It's basically a Yelp for people. You can review and give one to five star rating for everyone you know. And get this, you can't opt out of it. Once someone puts your name in there, it stays in there. Now it's supposed to launch in November and the co-creators market the app as a way to showcase your character as well as a way to decide like who you trust your kids worth. But there's some controversy around this. See, the story appeared in the Washington Post, and now there hasn't been much talk about it since. Google hasn't talked about the app. There's no copyright on the name. So people are kind of thinking maybe it's actually a hoax. There's no confirmation either way. It's kind of an interesting story. But if you think about it, really your character and how people judge you, that's kind of out and about anyway. And if you're kind of rude to that guy, he might tell that guy anyway. So just be nice to people. All right, let's get started on today's Daily Mix. All right, Cards fans are going excited and going crazy for the postseason. They call it Red October. The Cards clinched their third straight NL Central Division title as they won one, their 100th game of the season. Now they'll open the NL Division Series at home this Friday against the winner of Wednesday night's wild card game. That game will be between Pittsburgh and the Chicago Cubs. But more importantly than all of that, I think a lot of people want to know who is going to be on the postseason roster. Now you know they had all those September call-ups, a lot of guys got hurt, a lot of rookies stepped up and really helped along the way. So people want to know, are those guys healthy enough to play? Or like my mom says, are you going to dance with the person who brought you and let those rookies play? It's going to be very interesting to see. Plus, wouldn't a Cubs Cardinals series? That would draw a lot of attention. And remember that unemployed dad I told you about? He was handing out resumes outside Bush Stadium. Well, overnight his story went viral. And yes, now he has a job with an employment agency, Rad's dad. So it just goes to show you that if you are getting crazy, getting excited, you can go out, stand out in front of Bush Stadium, and maybe you can find a job. And kind of along that same Cardinals theme, now 96.3 Kurt Copeland and his girlfriend Dana K. Goodard have started a Kickstarter campaign. What they want to do is make a Cardinals themed tiki bar. They want to call it St. Luau. Now they launch, they'll be launching this campaign October 7th. It'll be running through November 11th. Now if the goal is met, they plan on, op plan on opening their bar on Cardinals opening day of 2016. Now they want it to be more than a bar, they want it to be live music, atmosphere, cheap food and drinks with um, like classic tiki drinks. They'll have 11 different food offerings for the 11 World Series wins. And yes, they asked Kurt what he would do if the Cardinals would win this World Series. He would add another dish, of course. They're gonna also have St. Louis classics with a Polynesian twist. Luau Love Fund will also be available where a portion of sales from a special item that day will go to a different charity and they'll have a back room that they're going to rent out for some charities. They've got a whole plan if they can get enough money. 
Check them out on Facebook, St. Luau. And the Blues, well, you know, their home opener is this Thursday. There's gonna be a pep rally outside and lots of fun with that. But the Scott Trade Center needs some major renovations. Yeah, Tom Stillman, the owner, says it's in desperate need of an upgrade. And he has met with city officials on possible renovations and financing. You know, it opened in 1994 as the Keel Center. And typically arenas renovate around the 20 year mark. So it's still in the early plannings, but expect more details coming later this year. Project Blitz in downtown West is Saturday, October 10th from 8 till noon. Basically, they want to clean and beautify St. Charles and Washington Avenue from 20th Street to Jefferson. Now, gloves, shovels, brooms, and trash bags will all be provided by Operation Brightside. They basically just want you to come out and help clean up, but you can always bring your own supplies if you want to, too. It's organized by Young Friends of Downtown STL, so brightsidestl.org for more information and help clean up St. Louis. Now, Brightside St. Louis bulb sale is happening this weekend, and you can still order those bulbs. They have daffodils and tulips, lilies, all of that you can order online. Plus, they'll have marsh milkweed and purple dome for sale at the greenhouse in Forest Park during the bulb pickup this weekend. Gotta love it when people start planting their bulbs because then it reminds me that winter is just a short time. Fall riverboat cruises are underway over there at the Gateway Arch Riverboats, the Becky Thatcher and Tom Sawyer. There's a variety of specialty cruises. They have a lock and dam cruise. They have an Oktoberfest theme. They've got day long party excursions to like Kimswick, Missouri. And the one that I think would be awesome to go to, they have a Halloween costume party. Of course, they also have their daily sightseeing cruises, which highlight St. Louis's history. And they have a Skyline Diner cruise every Friday and Saturday with live jazz music. All the information and all of those can be found at gatewayarch.com. Colors Over the Confluence is happening this Saturday from 10 to 4. Now this is at the Lewis and Clark Confluence Tower in Hartford, Illinois. This is great views of the fall colors. Plus, they've got the Itchy Brothers Chainsaw Wood Carvers there live in action. That's right, they're gonna be taking their chainsaws and making some really cool art right there. Plus, they're gonna have completed art that they're gonna be displaying and something that you could purchase. They've appeared at the Confluence for several years at the events and of course donated their work for display. Now it's a family event, so they're gonna have activities for the kids like pumpkin ring toss. There's also gonna be food available. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Confluencetower.com. Now it's about that time of the year we start worrying about the flu and getting sick. Well, free flu shots are available. It's a campaign offered by Barnes Jewish Hospital. The shots are free of lax leg tax and preservatives, and they're available for ages six months to older. And get this, no pre-registration required. It'll be on a first come, first serve basis while supplies last. Now this is made possible from funding from the Foundation for Barnes Jewish Hospital. If you want more information, through and for top docs, or you can go to barnesjewish.org slash flu shots. And you better want to get that because you don't want to end up sick because there's a lot of other fun stuff going on. In fact, the Sky Zone Trampoline Park, you remember them, right? They're in Chesterfield. Well, they have a new one open in Fenton. Now, this is the third franchise for the owner, a Webster Goes Native, and it took over $2 million to open. Now, it hires 75 employees, and he's actually moving his headquarters to that location as well. St. Louis natives Rick and Jeff Platt launched the Sky Zone in 2004 in Chesterfield, and now there's more than 160 locations. You know the Sky Zone, right? There's trampolines everywhere, up the wall, down, plus they have um, kind of trampoline aerobics going on. They have different kinds of dodgeball. It's just a lot of fun for like itty bitty kids all the way up. Skyzone.com. The Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation at 6th Annual St. Louis Teen Talent Competition. They're looking for entries. You can register online. It's open right now through November 20th, and it's open to all high school students in the metro area. They have scholarships and special awards, prizes, and what I think is the biggest perk of them all, a chance to compete at the Fox Theater in the finals in April. That means you would actually get to be on the Fox stage. That's like a dream of mine with somebody with little to no talent. That's hard for me to do. So if you have a talent, you should totally do this. The categories are singers and dancers. There's actors, musicians, comedians, rappers, ventriloquists, circus acts, spoken word, pretty much anything you can think of, baton twirling, it's there. Foxpacf.org for information 
your high school student or no talented one, sign up for that. The third annual Classic Black Film Festival is happening October 9th through the 11th. It's a tribute to the leading ladies celebrating the contributions of African American actresses with the AARP in St. Louis. Members and their guests can go to this. There's eight classical films over three days at the Missouri History, History Museum. Now tickets are sold at the box office only during festival dates. All right, my favorite story of the whole night, ready? It's my Angela jog. It's The Haunted Afternoon with Gary Hawkins. Now he's a professional paranormal investigator. So Gary Hawkins will present the program on local Illinois area hauntings and share photographs and video and his personal experiences as a ghost catcher. By the way, I don't think you actually ever get to catch the ghost. You just get like photos and videos of them. Now that's Saturday at two at the Six Mile Regional Library in Granite City. And some of his stories are awesomely, vividly cool. He talks about walking around the corner and he just saw plain as day like this old lady and he walked right through her because of course she was a ghost smrld.org for information on that. Gardens to Tables Food Day is Friday. It's from 11 to 1. It's to promote, you know, healthy and sustainable living and all sorts of cool practices with agriculture. It is hosted in Slew's Garden, just a block and a half away from the Allied Health Building at the corner of Compton and Rucker. There have a keynote speaker, Rusty Lee of Lee Farms. He will begin speaking at 11 a.m. at the Slew Track. Now you can move across the street to the garden for various stations and food. It's presented by nd.slu.edu. And this is the magical part of my show where I get an awesome guest and I'm very excited about this. Ken McLaughlin, the visiting director for The Kiss is here. How are you? I'm so glad so to have great you here. To be here. All right, so now you're from Houston. Yes, I am. You stages in Houston, correct? Uh -huh. Stage director theater. Now, do they typically let um, directors just, you know, if they Galilee ask all over the world <laughs> off we go if we have an opportunity yeah if there's something really exciting and this is a great play it was an amazing opportunity i just couldn't turn it down you know it's the american premiere of a dutch play which is really exciting it's exciting for st louis to have an opportunity to have the first you know american production of this incredibly popular european play and this play is very very interesting it kind of coincides with breast cancer awareness month yes so can you talk a little bit about the play yes it's about it's a two characters um just uh, past their 50s who are on this walk in the woods the woman in the in the set um, is on her way to get her results from a breast cancer scan and she has reason to believe that things aren't going to go very well when she ends up at the doctors she encounters a stand-up comedian who is on his walk um, trying to come up with some new and fresh ideas to invigorate his career um, it's a rather comic and at times sobering look at these big questions we face in our lives, especially when you're past 50 years old and you're thinking, what have I done with my life and where am I being led to? Right, what? Well, now, tell a little bit about, is it awkward for you coming into a, a different city with all this or you just take control? I'm the director. <laughs> how that works? No, you listen the, to me. I don't, I don't know what my hand does that. Well, or not. I feel like I feel like if I was a director, my hand would would do that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've been so blessed to come and work with a company like Upstream. Just amazing passion for theater, and it just was a great fit for me. So I felt like I walked in the door and hit the ground running with a group of people who were really committed to making a great piece and really committed to this particular play. And so it's been joyful for me. And I've met some amazing people throughout the whole community. And St. Louis is such an exciting place. There's so much going on in the city and so much arts and culture and so much stimulation for me. Yeah, we so talked a little great. about your, your visit. You have some family here in I St. Do. Louis. I do. So this visit is not quite as shocking for you because there's some people there to guide you through and you've tricked out Ted Drews, of course. Yes, Ted Drews. <laughs> had, uh, that was actually during audition period <laughs> in, in August. I went to Ted Drews. Thought that was pretty fantastic, actually. And so the only place I haven't been yet, uh, well, there's many places, but I haven't been to the Arch yet. So oh, yeah, well, I've, I've got that on my uh, schedule on the, this that's week. A, that's on the list <laughs> I, for I have this to go week. see it up close. <laughs> now, this play kind of also talks a little bit about the choices we make or don't make and how those can affect your life. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And, and, and if you think about it, I mean, every single choice we make every day actually has a, an amazing impact. On, well, you think and, about and that, people it makes it us. very scary. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, <laughs> there's this great line in the play where, where they have, talk about, you know, if you get so caught up in thinking how you affect the world, you might not ever do anything in the world. Right. So it really looks at those um, 
choices we make in our lives where we say, okay, this lets me down this path, but if I go this way, I end up on this path, and, and how do I do that? What do I follow? Do I follow my heart? Do I follow a spirit? Do I follow somebody I just met? I mean, how do we make these choices, and, and what happens um, when we do? It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful poetic play. Yeah, there's some recent awards, too. We got Best Drama and Best Performance by an Actor. So like the, all that stuff's kind of coming up. So this is this play is a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. I really hope um, people come out to see it because it's just one, as I said, an, an American premiere. Two, a truly um, important voice writing for the theater in Europe, uh, a Dutch playwright, and. It's really interesting to be able to hear those um, kind of global perspectives on these common universal things that we experience as human beings. So I, I think um, I think it's a really hopeful and joyful play that goes to some really dark places, like a great classic play. Well, I need to know when did the theater bug bite you that you wanted to get involved in? Oh this? wow, as as a baby, a baby. <laughs> like uh, well, you know, probably about second grade. I think I was in the uh, I was in the, a Christmas pageant. I got to play an elf and. That, that was it. Uh, it was a very long time ago, but from that point forward, I pretty well, much knew but it like was we're it. talking about, every choice makes a, every choice makes your life. So, how, what brought you? I mean, have you, did you grow up in Houston? I didn't. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, so how did you get from Ohio to Houston? I went to um, through um, a track of school. I went to Pittsburgh. I went to Pitt. I went to DePaul. Uh, after that education, I was hired by a theater company back in Cleveland, where I grew up, which was kind of wonderful. I was there for eleven years. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. And then I got an opportunity to be the artistic director of this wonderful theater in Houston that I took uh, 15 years ago now. So um, it's and now they feel so highly of you. They're just sending you around the world. <laughs> they send me into the world. <laughs> they send you in the world. Either that or they're it. very tired of me and they need, they give us a break, go away. Go away, we need some help. Well, tell people where they can find out where, where when, when and where will this play be? So the play opens this Friday um, and it will be at the Cranesburg Center for the Arts, uh, right on the grand and corner of Grand and Olive. Look oh, at me okay. with my right. Uh, directions. Right down the street from the Fabulous Fox. Very good. Uh, and it will play until the 26th of October. It is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And um, it's, I really say, come on, let's see the show. It's really fantastic. You, I really have to. Like, I didn't know anything about the show until I found out you were coming on, and I read about the play, and I am going to come see the play. Great. Because it's, it's very interesting, and I really do feel like sometimes that choice you don't make makes your life decision for you. So I kind of think it's kind of thing, and it's not very timely that it fits in with breast cancer awareness. Yeah, month. very much so. And, and the, and the, um, kind of terror that that can bring up for for all the women who are dealing with it or every one of us has been touched by right. this disease every one of us uh, and, yeah, everybody knows and somebody. to really bring greater focus to that I have so many dear friends that I've lost to breast cancer and um, how important it is to think about the experience of that human being and 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 how we as a community can support one another too so there's just so many amazing themes that are carefully handled and and poetically handled in the play. Right. We got, we got some stills of the play on there. Do you have a website that people can check out? Ticket uh, uh, information? Up, I, upstreamtheater.org. Okay. Uh, and that is what I know. That <laughs> As the visiting knows. director, that's he the best He is not from do. here. It's okay. All he knows <laughs> is that. <laughs> you definitely should check out the play. It's right there on your screen. We've got the dates, where it's at, and of course, upstreamtheater.org. Thanks, Ken, so much for joining us from the Upstreet Theater. And after you check out his play, make sure you check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, you can drop us a line right here at The Daily Mix at sctltv.net. We want to hear from you. So if something's coming on, you know, a visiting director, you want him to be on the play, shoot me an email. That's gonna be it for The Daily Mix. We keep it right here on STL TV and experience St. Louis. See you next time.